Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of The Other Side of Addiction. We are so grateful for all you guys out there. Thank you to all our listeners, man. We've got a really great show today. So our guest today wants to talk about confidence to be an action taker, as well as basically you can live a normal life, even if you're someone that battles with bipolar and someone that has also struggled with drug use. So I just really want to say thank you to our guest today, Austin Hammer. Austin, thank you so much for being with us. Hey, thank you, Alf. It's a it's very a privilege to be on your show. I've heard so much about you and your show, and I heard it's wonderful. So ah, I'm happy thank to be you. on it. Thank you so much. And and I love hearing that. So yeah, it's um sometimes I get an emotional even thinking about it. That means we're making a difference out there, right? And and our guests are the one who's making it popular. It's not me. You know, first of all, it's in my eyes, it's God who's making this all happen. And he's the one that's putting all the amazing guests on this show because it's definitely it's not me. So I'm so grateful that you and I met at that event a couple months ago. And and I had an opportunity. I believe our, our friend Matt Gibbons is the one who introduced us. And I'm so grateful for him for introducing us and um yeah, getting to know you a lot better. And I already feel like you're one of my brothers, man. I feel like I've known you for years already, and we've only chatted for a very short time. So again, thank you for being here. Hey, I appreciate you having me. I, You know, God orchestrates a lot of different things in our lives, and he's always put me in positions to meet certain people. And I likewise, man, like right when I met you, you're looking sharp in your tuxedo and stuff. You're fit. And I was just like, man, this guy is cool. You had like a radiating vibe off of you of just professionalism. And, and I really, it, it attracted me, man. So I'm likewise, I'm glad we met. Thank you. Thank you so much for your kind words. So Austin, you, you grew up here in the Salt Lake Valley, correct? Yeah. So I grew up, I was born on the West side of Utah and then moved up on the East side. Uh, long story short, I went to Cottonwood high school and um, you know, after high school, I left to California. Wow. That's yeah. that's a huge move. I, I went to Arizona, but I think California is still a little different. <laughs> <laughs> Arizona's hot, man. <laughs> oh, yeah, and I was working construction there. I remember working construction days when it was 125 degrees outside. Wow. No. You know, you're 17. You don't give a crap. <laughs> no, you're just like, yeah, exactly, man. It's all part of the experience. That's it. Well, what took you what took you to California? So I actually, uh, I went to Northern California on a baseball scholarship um, up at Feather River uh, Community College. And I started my career there. And uh, long story short there, I went from Kansas, played there and went to SoCal and finished my baseball career there. And you made it all the way almost to like the semi-pros, correct? Yes, sir. Yeah, I was playing for a lot of... Uh, you know, a farm team called the East LA Dodgers and it was going good, man. Um, you know, that's, that's kind of where my, I've always, you know, struggled with, uh, drugs and stuff like that all through college, you know, just kind of numbing some pain from my past, uh, with my mother and stuff like that. So I've always been able to do things as a low key drug addict, uh, with prescription pain pills, you know? So um, when I got to California and I started getting recognition by um, other teams and stuff and professional teams, I, um, I started going on kind of a bit of a bender, hanging out with people I shouldn't. And um, that's what tipped it off. You know, I was at the peak of my career. Um, I ended up hanging out with this guy and he was doing meth and I didn't know what it was or like, I've never seen it. You know, I was not that far into the drug game. So anyways, this guy put meth on my bong bowl and in my weed, and I ended up smoking that. And so I, I got hurt with my shoulder right oh. here. And the, the next day, long story short, the next day I uh, got a call from the Dodger scout and said, Austin hammer, we would like you to report to spring training for uh, uh, this year's league. And I wasn't able to go because I was in a psychosis. So I, you know, I told him, I go, Hey, I'm going through family issues, which was, you know, some sort of a lie. And, um, he just pretty much hung up the phone. Cause you know, that's how, 
that business works. So that was the end of my uh, career for baseball. Oh my hell, just just like that. Just like that, man, yep. And it, it all stems from just hanging around people you shouldn't be hanging around, you know? And yeah. so, but I was appreciative and it was flattering to get that invite and to make it to somewhat of a, you know, a elite level. And I, I had the skills to showcase at that level. And, um, you know, it was kind of taken from me from that. And it was my own decisions um, that led me there. So. So you didn't really blame the person then that put the shit in your, well, excuse me, we're doing our best not to cuss on this show, to put the crap in, in your weed, right? You, you didn't blame him. I mean, no. you just pretty much took responsibility right off the bat. Yeah. And there, and there was a dark story in there. He always, he used to come to me and he said he was a man of God. He was a uh, Catholic and I've always been a man of God. And, you know, I kind of look at myself as, you know, a warrior. So it's uh I was trying to get him to do better and I wasn't aware of that drug use, but I was aware of a lot of his other drug use. Um, he said he was trying to defeat his uh, mom's demon, you know, so he was using it to try to better his mom so he could help his mom get off of it. Well, he couldn't figure out the reason. So he turned to me and um, he drugged me. Well, long story short, which I want to write a book about it is I defeated his demon and I never got to tell him about it because he went to jail for meth use. His grandma caught him in his uh, in her garage. Wow. Yeah. Well, yeah. Like they say, what goes around comes around, right? <laughs> exactly. And you know what? It's a little raw, but I went to his front door to confront him about it because he told me over text and it, it, that's why you know, God is so good because I wasn't in the right frame of mind. I really wanted to, you know, kind of throw a punch at him. And uh, that's when I found out the news. He was he was um, uh, incarcerated and I was just like, OK, well, that was meant to be, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Man. So really, like you said in your bio right out of high school, your your life completely changed. Yep. Yep. I. uh so a little bit about the backstory. My mom, um, she grew up with, I grew up with uh, a mom that had bipolar. She was a wonderful mom until she went into her episodes and stuff like that. Um, she put me, you know, through a lot of certain stuff. Um, you know, I've saved her from suicide two times and um, I had to cope with that. And so I started taking Adderall um, right, out of, right out of high school and I started doing Percocets and stuff. Because gee whiz, you take you take one pill and all your problems are away for like five hours, you know, and you're just like, wow, life is really good. And it is such a lie. And it, it's it's kind of bull crap that they, you know, do that to youth and stuff is. And, and yeah, so it was just a huge lie in my life and it just spiraled. But one thing about me is I was able to still pre present myself, still go to classes um, still be able to perform on the baseball field, believe it or not. It was just more uh, after the game, I would take a Percocet or a lower tab just to ease my mind and my pain so I could fall asleep. So I started creating really bad habits for myself at an early age. So basically you were, you were a functional addict, kind of pretty much like yep. I was, right? I, I did my uh, alcohol and cocaine use for eight years, every single weekend. I was, I was a Friday and Saturday warrior. You know, and, and yeah. I've had I've had people say, no, nah, you did it during the week. Don't lie. And there may have been a few times I did. But the majority of the time, I mean, I would say 98 percent of the time. No, it was just the Friday and Saturday thing. Right. Because I had a good job and I has, you know, I had to keep my head on straight when I was at work because I had a lot of employees underneath me and I was around high speed machinery and projects. I had to make sure that I was staying focused and I hit it really well for for a long long time matter of fact my wife who i'm married with right now we dated for three years and the whole time we were dating she had no clue no clue i was doing coke she knew i was drinking because we were drinking together she had no yeah. idea i was doing anything else wow yep and that's that's it's hard man you know because you don't you don't think it's a problem you're like well i'm i'm going to work I'm doing me personally. It's just a lie to yourself, you know, and you're just, you're masking a lot of stuff. Um, 
and and all that kind of stuff so yeah when when you started doing the the prescription pills out of out of high school i mean you probably saw your mom right because she had to be on medication with being bipolar was that like a part of it uh, i mean other than also just wanting to take the edge off of things because we we all everyone that i have interviewed including myself we've gone through some kind of trauma right and society has got us believing that we're not supposed to feel the pain or we're not supposed to be depressed right and when actually god gave us all these emotions for a reason we're exposed we're supposed to experience them right yeah. we're not supposed to get stuck in them however we're supposed to experience them and some people yes it's in their genetics or however God had put them together. That's just, and they have to be on certain medication, right? To function properly. Right. It's just that I, I've noticed that we had a guest on not too long ago who basically grew up in a family that was full of alcohol and drugs. And he admired that. And he even said on the show, I used to say, when I grow up, I'm going to be just like that. And he did. He grew up you know, using a ton of drugs and alcohol because he looked up to his parents that were doing it. Yeah. And that's, that's a, it's hard because like him, you're looking at examples because you're just like you said, you know, it's like a way of life. You're looking at this example and, you know, kids and younger teens, we're kind of just like processors. We're gathering information in our mind and we're trying to process that of what we want to be when we grow up. And so looking at my mom, it was definitely the same thing. I wanted to drink at an early age. I wanted to smoke at an early age, just like him. And I was just like, I'm going to be the best drinker ever. I'm going to be the guy that smokes the most weed yeah. in the freaking room, you know, just because of my mom, um, you know, so we have these influences in our life and we think they're the right influences. And to, to go back to what you said about society too, they want us, they think man can't be vulnerable and cry. And I'll open up to everybody right now. I cry all the time. Hey, I'll cry on the way to work, um, park my truck, go into work like nothing happened because that's the way I process things and vice versa. On the way back home, I'm in tears sometimes thinking about um, most of it's just thinking about the stuff I've been through to the to the man I am now. And I, it gets me emotional because it's a beautiful thing, you know, and it's like it's it's amazing because back to what you said about God too, is we have all these emotions. We're human beings and we're meant to fill all those things. It's a, it's a beautiful thing to fill the darkest of the dark. And it's a beautiful thing to fill the lightest of the light because without those, we can't build um, who we are as a, as a person without our backstory, we can't be who we are for other people as a person as well. So that's, it's, it's an amazing thing. And, and amen, I agree with that 100%, you know, and, and, you know, the past 14 years, I've done nothing but work on myself and wanting to be a totally different person than who I used to be and wanting to be better. And it's crazy how when we start seeing things the way that you were just saying, Austin, how much it opens up our heart. And, and we allow these emotions to flow out like it's nothing, right? And that's exactly how they're supposed to be. We, we feel them, we let them happen, we gather ourselves back up, like you just said, nothing happened and we move on and we just keep going with life. You know, and, yep. and I don't know if it's because I've gotten older. I mean, I'm gonna be 60 in July and my wife told me a long time ago, well, our oldest granddaughter is 11. So it, it was about 11 years ago. She told me I've turned into a wussy since we've had grandkids because I will cry over some of the most littlest things. I mean, I'm going to admit it right here, guys. So listeners, you've got this on, you've got it on recording. I've never cared for chick flicks ever. I like the blow up stuff, shoot things, you know, I like the action packed. And, and when my, my wife and I, we have certain nights we, we watch TV. So she gets a TV one night, I get one one night, she gets to watch what she wants to watch. And when I have found myself crying on a chick flick, I'm like, holy crap. <laughs> hey, same. 
Same. Uh, I was watching. I was watching Coco the other night. That Disney yeah. film. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm freaking just sitting over there like, <laughs> like you know. And isn't that beautiful though? Like it is. It's 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 beautiful to. That's like empathy. You have we we have great empathy, and to be able to feel those emotions, you know, is just like we said, man. It's a beautiful thing to be able to feel that much. It's it's a it's such a blessing, man. It really is, and yeah. I appreciate you sharing that with me too. You know, because that's that's me. I'll be watching yeah. a chick flick too, and I'll be like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I I get emotional during some of my public speaking. However, I've turned it into a joke because. We were watching TV once. I can't remember what my, I think it was my, one of my wife's favorite show was uh, when a man loves a woman. That's one of my wife's favorite shows. Right. And I, if I remember right, it's about alcoholism, which that's what she battled with. And we were watching it one time and I actually was crying. I'm over there kind of wiping my eye, you know, and, and I believe she said something. She's like, are you crying? And I'm like, no, <laughs> you know, and she's like, yes, you are. And, and I'm like, I can't believe I'm crying. And she goes, babe, I think you're sexy when you cry. So now I use that in my talks. When I get emotional and I start feeling what I feel inside while I'm talking about it, I just joke with the audience and say, hey, guys, you can judge me if you want, but my wife thinks I'm sexy when I cry. <laughs> so hey, I'll just let it go hey. with that, right? <laughs> That's, you know, what's funny, uh, my ex-girlfriend, bless her heart, and she's a really, you know, good person, things ended really well, so um, she told me that too, she goes, <laughs> you're so cute when you cry, I love it, there she used to go. wipe my tears, and I'm like, get away, get away. <laughs> <laughs> it's all good, you know, um, in your bio, you were talking about uh, con um, confidence, and being being an action taker, and I put some stars by it down on my notepad. And, and, and the reason why is fear, fear keeps people away from doing a lot of amazing things. And I don't know if everyone knows it, but I don't want to say the word, but I don't know if everyone knows it. Fear is the devil's playground. That is one of his greatest strengths. He's keeping us from becoming something different. And growing you know our our good friend cause green he invited us to a fire walk here about a week ago and when i got his invite i'm like oh my gosh this is so cool i have this down on my list of 300 things i want to do and so i was signing up and and my wife says what are you doing i'm like i'm signing up for a fire walk i says i've wanted to do this it looks interesting right i mean the thought of walking across 2000 degree Fahrenheit coals with your bare feet. How is that not a rush? You know, I jumped out of an airplane a couple years ago at, um, what was it? 13,000 feet. What a freaking rush, <laughs> you know? I've always wanted to do that, man. Oh my gosh. What shocked me was my wife went, I want to do it. Now the woman I married Gosh, we've been together 18 years, so we dated three years before. So 15 years ago, no way in hell would she even think about that. And to see who she is now, that's where her addiction has taken her, right? Her addiction has, has taken her through the darkness of hell, basically. And I believe you even mentioned it in, in your bio as well, that how you can dig yourself out of the darkness of dark. And when you come out... The light that is shining on you is so freaking bright. And she did it. We got there. And when it came time to go out and walk on these coals, I mean, they laid a bunch of sod down because we're downtown Salt Lake. And they've got all they've got these shovels and they're putting these coals out on this grass and they're just glowing because they waited till dark before we could go out. Well, because it's cooler, right? You got the glow yeah, of the, well, you know, the glow of the coals, you know, and you can see the lights kind of changing and from the heat. And, and she came over to me when I was getting ready to go. And, and I looked down and I says, how come your shoes aren't off? She goes, I, I, I don't know. I think I'm changing my mind. And I'm like, babe, you got this. She goes, you know what I do? And she freaking took her shoes off 
and she went a couple people after me and it was so cool to see her have the confidence and to do something that really scared the crap out of her as, as well. I was even scared, right? I'm not saying that I wasn't scared because you're you're walking across some hot freaking coals. I'd be scared too. Right? Yeah. And she did it. And, and I was so proud of her. And, and I definitely let her know at the end of that. I'm like, babe, I'm so proud that you did this. And she goes, I screwed up though. I looked down because they, te- they tell you not to look down because then you see the coals, right? Yeah. And she did get a little teeny blister on her foot. Nothing bad. It wasn't like a third degree or even a second degree burn. She just got this little teeny blister. And, and she goes, I messed up. I looked down. I'm like, you didn't mess up because you went. You did the whole walk. You didn't exactly. mess up at all. <laughs> exactly. And she finished it. So that's all that matters, man. That, yeah, that's right? hard. Even a grown, even the biggest muscly man in the gym would probably look at that and be like, whoa. No. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so is that what you mean by what you put in your I mean just being an, an yeah. action taker right yeah just the action just build building up enough confidence so like with the stigma with, with bipolar everyone's like already uh jumps to you know oh getting an unemployment check or like you know oh I can't do these jobs because of my illness and and stuff and that's the stigma of bipolar is people think like oh, you can't do that job because you have a mental illness. And, you know, to go back, I went through a very dark time. I'm talking eight months in a basement, crying every night, pretty, pretty much, you know, trying to watch movies that were uplifting and stuff. My, my friends would try to get me out to do something. I, I wouldn't do it um, and stuff like that. So I was in a very, very, very dark place. Um, And so that's the deep hole we're talking about and stuff. So once once I got out of that hole, I pushed myself to go to work, even if it was three hours of work, even if it was one hour of work, I would just show up and try to do the best I could, best I could. And next thing you know, three hours turned into four hours, four hours turned into six hours to a full day to full weeks of going to work. And I just I wasn't happy, though, like I was just it just, everything was neutral. And, um, and the more I started doing that and building my life, the more happiness I saw. And every single day, even if the happiness just lasted two or three hours, and then I found myself, Hey, I feel good after work. I like what I did that day. I rest my head, head easy. I started getting good rest. So after a year and a half, two years of just turmoil, I, I, also built my connection with God a lot, you know, and I trusted in him and he brought me to all these places, you know, so it went from totally down in the dumps to being a full-time worker and stuff like that. And I prayed about it. And, you know, one thing I feel like sometimes you can just hear that message clearly. And, and, uh, so once you get your life in order, I was just like, Hey, now I need to start talking about this and giving people advice because since those times I've gone on to work for my father's business and I make business deals for him in Colorado. I make business deals in Reno, Nevada, and I make local business deals here in Salt Lake city, you know? So there I was having the stigma of bipolar. Like I can't get a job. I can't, I can't go do this. No one's, you know, they're going to look at me and, and back what we we talked about a while back is I used to say, oh, look at that lunatic. Oh, why he went to the loony bin. Oh, why would we trust in him? I used to, I used to be that guy too. Um, and then here I am. And um, now I'm fighting for what I was stigmatized about, you know? So um, yeah, man. So it was a, it's a, it's just a beautiful thing. And it's just a confidence to have, confidence in yourself to get out of that deep dark hole you have to have confidence to go to work every single day and do the best you can that day you have to have confidence in um, your path and what god has laid out for you because god can lay out a path but if you're not taking action and also most importantly having confidence with that action um then you're not going to be able to fulfill that you know so here i am down in the dumps to being a salesman for my dad and doing over, you know, a hundred, 
my first year I did over, you know, $200,000 worth of business, which I didn't make, by the way. Right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> For the company, though, it was good. Well, there's still expenses, of course. Right. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. You know, so yeah. yeah. Oh, no, go ahead. Finish. Finish up. Oh, yeah. So, you know, just having confidence in yourself, most importantly, and listeners, you know, you really truly can do, you can do anything you put your mind to. And I'll even go into it like this. Every day I used to wake up and said, I can't, I can't do it. I can't get up. I can't do this, you know? And I flipped it around and said, I got up and said, I can't, I just repeated to myself, I can go to work. I can, I can live and exist in society. I said all these affirmations to myself every single morning and it worked. And people like, all I gotta say is don't give up after a month of doing this. It took me three to four months. It's something that we have to battle all the time until we get to a turning point. And that turning point could be a year for some people, six months, three years, but I promise you, if you keep fighting and you hold some sort of faith or look up to some sort of higher power, um, your life is going to change. And my life has changed. I'm, I, you know, and, and I give it all up to the upstairs guy, you know, because yeah. if it wasn't for him and wasn't for me, then I wouldn't even be on this podcast, you know? So, you know, and, and the way that you put that Austin is, is so flipping true. And you know, we all need help, right? We, we all need some direction and, and it's not weakness to ask for help. Society has us believing it is right. If you ask for help, well, you're not strong enough to do it on your own. Well, no one can do it on their own. I don't care what you're fighting, what you're dealing with. You can't do it on your own. Just to put it out there, even if you don't have people that surround you, you still have that guy upstairs right yep. and if you reach out to that person for me i call him god some people just say a higher power some people call him father i call him father sometimes that's 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 your guidance because yep. i don't know how many times in the depth of my wife's addiction i heard her say my life is over my life's done right she's burned every single freaking bridge there was to burn and she didn't leave anything behind besides ashes and to yep. see where she is at here on the ninth of this month 29 29 months sober to see where she's at she's a certified peer support specialist now she's helping people through their journey she has turned into a whole different individual she's more going right she you know she you you stuck yourself in a basement for a long time and her she kept everything inside right she she wouldn't even talk to anyone in a store if she saw someone she went to school with she wouldn't go over and say hi she was just because she was like well they're going to judge me right no she's judging herself because we do that right we're we're our own worst enemies and yep. to be able to do what you did by saying I'm going to change this can't and put it into can. I tell you what, as time goes, what that does in your life, and you don't even realize it. I think you said it took about three months before all of a sudden you started realizing there was a change, right? You're going yes, to wake sir. up one day and you're just going to go, oh my gosh life is so much better. I mean, you made it to semi pro in baseball. My dream was to play professional baseball. And I didn't even get picked for high school because I didn't have the popular last name. I busted my butt and I know me inside. I was better than not all the players, but I was better than a few that still made the team. To, for you, your skills, your abilities that God gave you you still had to have someone help you along that way, right? You still yep. have to have someone to say, hey, I don't know what position you play, but hey, this is how you do this. This is how you do that. And it was to, to build your skills, to make you better at what you did. And life is the exact same way. 
when we find people like yourself, Austin, who are going out and saying, this is where my life was, but look where I'm at today. It's possible. Yep. It is possible. Exactly. And that's, it's just same thing with the listeners right here. It's like, find yourself a mentor, someone to look up to, because we do get in the stigma of, Hey, I can do this by myself. I, I can do this, you know, like I don't need anybody else. And it's like, cause they think people's listening and watching, you know, the only person that's listening and watching is God and you know, your angels or your ancestors. And I'm a big believer in that. So it's like, go get a, a mentor, go get a life coach um, or, or talk to family. And, and that's, that was the thing about my mental health journey and addiction is I was really honest with my family. Um, I would just say, dad, I'm not doing good. I'm not doing good. I'm, I'm very dark right now and I'm going through something, you know, and um, you know, he would be there to talk to me. Um, there even came a point, you know, I went up to the university of Utah psych psychiatric un unit. So you take, I'm this semi professional baseball player about to make my dreams come true to now I'm in a hospital and I'm just looking around like, what, what happened? What did I do to myself? And that's that that was the key word right there to myself. Nobody did this to me. It was myself. I take accountability. So that's that's the main message, too, is just taking accountability for what you you did. Um, and, and that was that, you know, so I was in there for two weeks. Um, I ended up getting out on um, good behavior and and I went to the court systems and said, I will change my life. And that was the, one of the biggest, huge, you know, huge uh, wake, wake up calls for me, you know, and I was like, no, I know I'm capable of more. And I know God put me on this earth for more than just this. And it's it was my fault why I went up there. So I I, you know, got out of there. Um, and that's when all of it pretty much started, you know, don't play the victim, uh, take accountability, um, say the truth. Um, no matter what, for some reason, even like little simple things like, Hey, Austin, do you see that movie? And in the past, I'd be like, yeah, that was such a good movie, you know? And it's, it's just like building simple things like that in your life will take you a long way. You know, you know what I'm saying? So, yeah, I, exactly. You know, I'd like your input on this one, Austin. I've said on the show quite a few times, and I've even said it in some of my public public speaking roles the way i look at life now and where i have where i have traveled the past 14 years <clears throat> i've come a long ways and even my wife says i am definitely not the person that i was that she met 18 years ago right and neither is she we we and not in a bad way we went through our bad times but we've come out being better than what we were before or what we was before I am a firm believer that there is no finish line when it comes to bettering yourself. Yes, there are goals, right? I can set a goal. You can set a goal. You can reach that goal. And you can go, you know what? Here's another one. And you can go that. So you can, you can kind of jump from stone to stone on goals, right? Kind of like a I don't know. I don't play video games, but I, I've played a couple with my grandson, like the Mario, and you're trying to get to different levels. But when it comes to being a better human being, I don't think there is a finish line. I, I will continue from here on out for the rest of my time that God allows me to be here on this earth to be a better person and to do everything I can to help someone else in their journey through my experiences. Yep, exactly, man. And, and, uh, you know, it goes with, it's not where you begin, it's where you end that defines us as human beings. And just like you said, I'll, I'll always be learning till the day I take my last breath, I will learn something, whether I'm dying at a hospital and a nurse tells me something, and that's a sign from God, or um, if I'm up in the mountains, and I take my last breath, and I'm just looking at the scenery it's, it's, uh, there's always a message in everything. And, and we can't let our egos get in the way of that because you want to learn, you want to take what God gave us here and bring it on to, if it's the resting place with him, if it's another life, 
you want to take all this knowledge from this life to wherever God has planned for you, you know, and, and, uh, many people don't think, uh, you know, many people think this is just the end. There's nothing to this. Well, there's no gosh, Dan, well in hell that this is the final place for us because we are learning a whole bunch of knowledge. We're going through a whole bunch of stuff for what, just to, to end. No, no, sir. It's not, you know? So it's like, we learn and continue to learn. And, and I just love that what you said, because man, I, I learn every day. I learn from kids. I'll be hanging out at a yeah. barbecue and a kid will look at me and say something. I'm like, Hey, I just learned from, you know, that's, that's amazing. I never, you know, I never thought I could learn from a kid like that. And, and that's me taking down my ego and, and respecting that. So. And, and I'm so glad that you brought that up, Austin. I mean, you're bringing up some really, really good points and probably not even realizing it's happening. The ego, my gosh, you know, <clears throat> the ego will usually take us somewhere that we don't need to go, you know, and, and like you said, you can learn something from everyone, even if it's a little kid. And my eyes opened up when my daughter had our first granddaughter and <clears throat> they were going through a move and they were staying at my son-in-law's house, uh, parents' house in Bountiful and it was snowing. And I think it was my son-in-law who took a picture of my daughter with our granddaughter and they're at a sliding glass patio door and she's got both of her little teeny tiny hands up on the glass and she's got her face pressed against the glass and it's snowing outside. And he was able to capture the look on her face. She's seeing snow for the very first time in her life, right? And I don't know if she was eight or nine months old or a little over a year. I'm, I'm not for sure how old she was. When I saw that picture and I saw the look on our granddaughter's face, the amazement and as she started growing into one and two and three, and then we had another granddaughter, I started really paying attention, which I didn't really pay that close attention when I had my two daughters, right? Because I'm being the parent and I'm not observing things. Yeah. I was observing these kids seeing things for the very first time and experiencing things, especially when they learned a new word, right? I mean... That new word was big for them. Like during Easter, our grandson's new word was literally. He used that all day long, literally. And I'm, I told my daughter, I'm like, wow, he's found him a literally. new because everything was literally, right? This is awesome. literally a huge egg. This is literally pennies or ever. I mean, it was literally everything. That's awesome. I'm like, I am learning something from my grandkids. They are looking at life in amazement. And we have programmed ourselves to where it's just like it's nothing. Like it's yeah. nothing. And we're missing so many blessings that are going past us on a daily basis, right? If I I was up hiking last, last spring and I went up to Lake Desolation and it's freaking still a ton of snow up there probably like there is right now and I'm coming down after the hike and I'm walking on a snow covered trail the whole hillside of this mountain is just covered in snow and guess what goes fluttering right in front of me a freaking butterfly. butterfly a butterfly in the mountains I don't know how high up we are there's snow on the ground I've never seen a butterfly in the snow ever that's amazing and I stopped and, and looked at that and I'm going, this is freaking so cool. Right? Yeah, Instead of just going, oh, there's a, right. Instead of just going, oh, there's a butterfly. I've seen millions of them. But to see it where I saw it during that time, it's yeah, we have to open turning, our eyes. Yeah, you turn your it's like I don't know. It's just something magical, right? Like you tune in, there's a message there of awareness and like being in the present moment. And that's, that's it too, is, you know, just, you know, we're not in the present moment enough to enjoy some, 
like some like I back in the day I would just look at it and then look away. But now I'm like, guys, look at this butterfly. Isn't that beautiful? That is so beautiful. Yeah. You know? And I think that's magic. That's the magic in life is right there is being aware, finding that key moment in life um, and being able to absorb that, you know, and I, that's just beautiful. Yeah. I like the saying, life isn't happening to you. Life is happening for you. Mm -hmm. uh, a, a coworker of mine was just having this conversation on, um, gosh, it was actually last Friday. We were up at a job in park city and, I was talking to him about some things I've been battling with, especially when it comes to finances and my mindset on things. And we, we look at life pretty much alike and, and we're always learning from one another and we're always sharing things that we have learned by reading a book or he reads the Bible a lot. I mean, he, he knows a lot of the sayings in the Bible and, and he goes, Al, he goes, I know you know this, but he goes, you're not in the moment of life. You're too busy looking off this way. And that's the 3D trickiness. You live your life as what's happening in your life right this very moment because this is where the blessings are. And when you're off in the 3D and you're looking at, well, what's going to happen tomorrow? For me, I'm worrying, can I come up with this money to pay this bill? I'm taking away everything beautiful that's right here right in front of me this very moment yep exactly because the 3d clouds us man it clouds us so much because we're we're thinking it's like an ant and an ant form you get ants get placed in the ant form uh farm and all they know is dig build get food this they don't stop and realize that they're in a aquarium and that's I like the analogy you know, that's an analogy I like to use. And it's like, man, there's so many ble like blessings we have on earth. Yeah, let's, you know, get the work done and we need the money to survive and stuff. But that's not everything. I mean, you know, we got beautiful mountains here in Utah. They got the beach in California. Uh, even in I was in Kansas, they have amazing food, beautiful cornfield, just things you haven't seen before. And you can find the beauty in them. And that's what it's about, man, is stop, look around and focus on the present moment when you don't have work, when you don't have priorities and get out and be in nature, whatever it is, it could be a lake out in Kansas and everyone's boating and having fun. It could be a, a mountain in Utah and just being in the present moment up there. And I think that's what life's about because then life is happening for us. And yeah. even in work, you can find the beauty in work as well. Um, being in the present moment and working like for me, I think it's such a highlight because I'll, complain sometimes i'll be like gosh i don't want to be at work and then i just remembered the time hey i didn't think i was ever going to work again and boom that's positivity and that positivity sparks into something else and um i'm able to finish that day and go enjoy my day after work so great great way of looking at it because i've done the same thing austin <clears throat> you know i i want to i want to spend every day of the week in the studio you know, we're in the middle of a studio change right now, and I'm just sitting here in my at my kitchen bar with a green screen behind me. <laughs> <laughs> what I want to do, though, I, I want to spend every day in the studio interviewing amazing people like yourself, and I want to do more public speaking. And, and a guy that I did a concrete job for three years ago, I work with this guy now, right? Which is crazy is every single person that I work with, which is only three other guys, they're all in recovery. It's crazy mm -hmm. how it worked out, right? And we we That's get crazy. It is crazy, and we get really That's solid crazy. about some some heavy heavy talks. And when he when he hired me, we do like home improvement, so we do demos and remodels and different things like that, and put in decks and and I bet you, gosh, it, I started with him last April, and it probably took me till. November, in all honesty, at least November, where when I went into work, I'm like, I just don't want to freaking be here. I just don't want to be here. I want to be in the studio. That's all I want to freaking do. I want to get speaking engagements. I want to, now, of course, I want to make a living doing it, right? However, I also love the inspiration that I get from all my guests because it's my therapy. 
you know, you guys, you and all our other guests, they're, you're helping me. You're helping me become a better individual because you're sharing your experiences and, and your love and your kindness and your darkness, right? You're, you're helping me become a lot better person. And it finally hit me. It's almost like I got hit upside the head with a freaking rock. It finally hit me. It's like, my gosh, God has given me this opportunity so I can make some money and at least pay bank bills, which I'm very, very grateful for. And I need to accept it. And I work with three amazing guys. I mean, all of them. They're just awesome, awesome guys. It's a blessing. I was looking at it as like, you know, I remember times even on my hands and knees working, putting floor in. I'm just going, God, please, I don't want to do this anymore. God, please, I don't want to do this anymore. You know, I, I heard at the end of every day, my body just doesn't like the manual labor anymore like it used to, you know, 20 years ago. Of course, I'm almost 60, as I've said, so it's all it's catching up with me. <clears throat> but it took me that long to realize what a blessing it is to because I got a boss who I'm like, hey, I can only work a half a day today because I got a meeting to do or I've been invited to be a guest to to be on a podcast or I was invited to go speak at this recovery center. And he goes, awesome, man. I love it. And he That's allows free. me to go. Right. He allows me to go. I can't go punch a clock somewhere and have that happen. Right. Because that's say, well, am I your employee? or employer or, or what right you know so i'm very blessed now and now i just go and do what i need to do and accept it instead of fighting it exactly well i feel like because with that you see proof right you like some, like in the past i'd be like is god real i don't know like blah 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 but as you know you know it's like it's real he lays out a path for you you take action you have confidence taken in that action. It leads you to great places. You don't, and then you, then you know that it's just God's way of showing you different um, lessons and stuff like that. Especially for me, is like, hey man, I, you know, I was nervous about this, very excited about this, um, but I knew it was in His His plan, and and I had faith in that. So right when we sat down and when we talked before, I was just on cloud nine, man, and. And just like you said, you know, there's a vibe in this, in this room, you know, and it's unstoppable. Um, and I don't know, it's just, it's just truly wonderful to hear your story as well, because listeners, I was, I, you should have looked at this guy at this convention. I mean, Al was dressed in the <laughs> nines. I was like, who is this guy? Like, this guy is unbelievable. Even all my buddies were like, who's that guy you were just talking to? And I was like, oh, he runs a podcast show. And uh, for the other side of addiction and all this good stuff. And they're like, wow, dude, what's his, we want to see. So they're looking you up and stuff and you get, they go, damn, Al Richardson's one sharp guy. And I was like, <laughs> yeah, I got a podcast with him. <laughs> yeah. So it's cool. It's cool to hear your story and it's inspiring me too. You know, it's, it's really inspiring me. So I appreciate you, man. Well, thank you. And, and, and yeah, I'm throwing it right back at you, buddy. Cause, uh, yeah, when Matt introduced us and, and I was chatting with you, and I believe I spoke with your dad even before I spoke with you. And I was just like, I felt it immediately, you know, and there's there's some people that takes me a while and there's other people, man. I mean, within just a short period of time, I mean, my wife's even made the comment, you know, she's like, who was that you were ta just talking with? And I'll tell her. And she goes, how long have you known him? I'm like, five minutes. <laughs> and she goes, <laughs> Gosh, the way you guys were talking, it's like you've known each other for years. And it's like, it's just that energy, right? You you can feel it when you connect with somebody that your vibes are the same. You just want to do something better and do something to help other individuals. I agree. Because, yeah, no, when I was talking to you, I was like, I can be myself around out. Like, I can use my net. I don't have to be a certain person to talk to Al. I was just, it was just there, man. It was so fluent. It was, it was awesome, man. I, you know, I don't mean meet too many people like that. Usually it's really professionalism. And with you, I was just like, no, I'm going to straight talk to Al. Like I talked to my, you know, my best friend, you know? So it's just like, I'm going to talk to Al. Like I do my family. I'm going to talk to, you know, just stuff like that, man. So it was just really, it was just really cool. 
Yeah. 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 I felt the same way. Okay. I'm going to ask you here. Is that the all seeing eye you have tattooed right there? Yeah, it is. Is that what it is? Is it? Yeah. That is so freaking cool. I love it. What, what was the meaning behind that? Um, actually there's, so I drew this tattoo when I was going through a rough time. So I don't know. There's a crow right here. Okay. Yep. I can see it. And yeah. There's a pyramid with a sun and a moon and then the all seen eye. Okay. And then there's a dove right here. So is it, it, says, it? Oh, go ahead. So so what, what does it say? It's basically a big, oh, that says ambition. Oh, okay. Got it. Got it. Okay. So like my ambition to live, my ambition to do the things that I do, the ambition to keep me going. Um, so it's basically a tattoo. Okay. Here's what's weird about it. It, it, uh, I got my crow when I was going through the dark stages of my life. And then the middle stage, I got the pyramid and the all seen eye. So I was able to see through, you know, see no evil, uh, see through all the wickedness of the world. And most importantly, people that I didn't want to surround myself by. And then the dove means light. So stepping into my light and stepping into my Christ like consciousness and stuff like that. So it was just really uh it's pretty much a big yin and yang tattoo as well you know so yeah. it's just going from my dark side to my light side and accepting the light because sometimes we want to be like you know a dark like for me <laughs> hopefully i just wanted to be this dark individual you know and just wanted to you know use drugs and party and be a degenerate type of thing and then you know and that was my dark side was you know, uh, sniffing stuff, using pills, hitting bongs full of pills, you know, and stuff like that. So that was my dark side. Then I moved into this certain stage in my life where I could see, start to see stuff like the, through the illusion, seeing through other people, seeing through, um, you know, what I had, you know, just the evilness and then, you know, back to the light side. So that's that's an awesome tattoo and thanks for explaining the whole story of that because that that says your journey right you've shared a lot of your journey already throughout the show however that tattoo man really really puts the exclamation point i believe on all of it yeah it's crazy you spotted that out i didn't right? even i didn't <laughs> even know it was showing <laughs> that's a that's cool that's yeah i'd never yeah but this is the tattoo i got when i was going through all my stuff and it was weird how it was orchestrated because i got the crow and you know like i said um got yeah. it all orchestrated so it was, it was just weird did the event that you and i met at did you meet my friend mallory roosh the tiny she's like five foot one five foot two long blonde hair oh yeah i did a yeah beautiful, i didn't get a chance. smile yeah, I didn't get a chance to talk to her. I think we just shook, uh, shook hands and stuff. So. Okay. So she has a tattoo on her forearm, and it's the whole eye, kind of like what you have there. And then it's got the EKG thing going through it, right? Like the heartbeat. Yeah. And, oh, and that's she, awesome. Isn't it? And, and she it's on the cover of her book as as well and it's um the the name of her book is in oh my gosh i know it like crazy because i've i've um what is it inspired to live or something like that or inspired to recover but that's that's what she saw it as was was you know the dark times of all her drug use and and everything that she went through and what she put her family through and then just by the grace of God of having a PO that saw something in her and taught her that she is an amazing, amazing individual and seeing, seeing her where she's gone on her journey. But uh, yeah, she has it on her, on her hoodies that she sells and, and it's tattooed. Awesome. It, it is so flipping cool. Really, really cool. And yeah, so when I saw that eye, that's what it was reminded me of too. I'm like, gosh, Mallory's got that eye, you know. And it's not the all seeing eye, but it's still the eye with the EKG thing going through. It's pretty, pretty. That's awesome. awesome. I'm gonna have to let me write that down in my notes. What's her book called? Uh, let me tell you what. Just a sec. I'm gonna go off screen, everybody, and I'm gonna grab her book. If I can find it.
I'm shocked I'm not able to find it because um, my wife read it too. And let's see, I got one here, I bet you. All right, I don't know what I did with it. Um, but it's Inspired to Recover, I believe, by Mallory Roosh. Cool. I'm going to put that in my notes real quick. Uh, we have we have some extra copies. I'll see if I can locate it, Austin. I don't remember if uh, the extra copy that we have, if it was someone that won something at our at our summit here on April 15th. And we were supposed to give it to someone. My wife will know because she was kind of dealing with that stuff. If not, um, I'll get it to you. Okay. Yeah, I would love to read that. It's a great book. My my wife read it. I haven't read it yet, but my wife read it and she was like, babe, this she did a phenomenal job. It's a kick-ass book. And it goes through her whole journey, you know, of all the stuff she went through and that's why we're doing speaking engagements together. Cause she's got a great story and, and we're just out there. She promised Chuck who was her PO that she would basically the rest of her life, she'd be out there inspiring other people to help them in their journey. And it's a cruel story. That's awesome. I, you know, I have that dream. I want to write a book and go into detail about uh, my darkness and stuff. Cause it was, I mean, five, six years of it, you know, of just doing really, you know, dumb stuff, going to jail twice, you know, just stuff like that. And I definitely want to get analytical in a book about it just to inspire people because um, I feel like I made a promise to God is if he got me through this, got me back to normal life, I would give back to um, the world or just to one person or two people. Um, just to inspire them that they can go through the craziest of darkness hours to the lightest of life, you know? And so that's what my mission is to do and, um, you know, and stuff like that. So I've been, you know, I've talked at golf show or golf tournaments. I've talked at bars for men's suicide awareness and stuff. Um, and I'll share a little bit of a dark thing. I, you know, I had a suicide attempt. I uh, took a whole bunch of olanzapine, a whole bottle of it, and I laid in bed, and for some reason, I threw up. I don't know. I did not, you know, I didn't stick my fingers down my throat, nothing. It was just, I threw it all up, and I went through a ride for two days. I mean, almost like a, a mushroom trip, you know, everything was rising in my room, going like this for two days, and I kind of just had to hang on, but for some weird reason, there was this voice inside my head, a very prominent voice saying, you're going to get through this. You're moving home to Utah because I was in California at the time, and you're going to go be with your family. Um, you're going to be okay. And I went through a week of turmoil that time, and I got back to my life, and I haven't looked back. And that was kind of like the agreement. I had with him, for, you know, is just get back, um, be around your family, be around the place you love, and inspire people with your story now. So just, yeah, it was a really r rough time. I, you know, I've messed, I, I used to call myself a fuck up, you know, like, I'm a, I'm a fuck up of my family. I fell out of school. Um, I've got kicked out of school before, uh, you know, using weed and stuff like that. And so... I always used to look at myself as a fuck up and now I'm, I look at myself as a, uh, you know, my confidence to take action, my confidence to get over these things, you know, that were out of my control. And, and yeah, and I just look at life in such a positive way. And I saw in every minute because of, because of that, you know, if you would have asked my friends and family if that would ever happen to me, they would be like, Austin Hammer? No way, dude. No, that wouldn't happen. But I surely did. Man, I didn't want to be here anymore. And um, and I had that, and I got over it. And, um, you know, and without my friends and family, you know, I, all my best friends were there for me the whole time. I mean, um, you know, I was, what, 20, 
like I was 26 years old and I asked some of my best friends to sleep with me and they did, you know, I was like, dude, I need you right now. Like, please come, please come over and be with me. And they did, they slept, they slept with me in the same bed, you know, and it's, wow. it's not, you know, it's, it's like that. I have a really tight circle, but we go through things and it happens, but you know, just like you said, Al, like the help with God and stuff. I mean, it's, it's, it's actually miraculous what you can do when you have faith and you believe in God and, or you believe in the higher power, like you said, whatever you guys want to call it. And I support every, you know, I support every belief that everybody has because, um, you know, whatever your higher power is, whatever brings you to spirituality for me, for me, it's God. So, um, and yeah, man, it's just those types of stories, you know, it's just, uh, it's a rough thing to go through, but that's why I'm here is the, I'm on a mission to help at least one or two people, you know, if not the whole state of Utah and if not the world, man, you know, so. You know, thank thank you for sharing that Austin, you know, uh, Maybe there's one of the one of the other reasons why we connected so easy. In 2019, I was on my way home from a networking group, and I was tired of coming home to what I was coming home to every day. And I had decided I was going to come home and get my pistol and go up in the mountains and take my life because I just couldn't deal with it anymore. And it goes to show that there is a higher power, right? That there is God. Cause I mean, you threw up, which means you threw up probably the majority of those pills. To save oh yeah. Your life, right. That throw up saved your life. Yep. On the way home, on the way home, uh, I got a phone call and after I got off the call, I saw the screenshot on my phone and it was of my two daughters and three grandkids. And I remember I broke down and just started bawling. I was crying so hard. I couldn't even see the road. I pulled over and I'm just sitting there balling. And I'm thinking, this is crazy. This is just flipping crazy. I'm, I'm thinking about killing myself and taking time away from my daughters and time away my grandkids have with me because of what's happening in my personal life, right? Yep. And some events had happened. I, I changed my mind. And, and again, I don't know if I would have done it. If I would have got that pistol and went up in the mountains, I don't know if I would have had the guts to even pull the trigger. I don't know. I'm grateful I don't know, right? I'm so grateful it didn't yep. get that far. You said you heard that voice in your head. I want to share something real quick before we, we finish out the show. I love going hiking in those mountains, man. I, I love being in the mountains. And I went, it was probably, it was the spring. I think it was still that spring. Well, that was June when that happened. So I think it was the, the very early winter or late winter of 2020. I went up for a hike and I decided to go hike Lake Blanche. And I only made it maybe half a mile up the trail and I started hitting into the snow. And I'm like, ah, oh, man, you know, I don't have no snowshoes. I didn't have spikes even at the time. I'm like, I don't know. I'm just going to see how far I could go. And I'd go, I don't know how much further. And I'm like, yeah, I should probably turn around. The snow's getting deep. Next thing I know, I'm going a little further. Same thing. Yeah, I probably should turn around. Something kept driving me to keep going. Before I knew it, I'm breaking up on top of the hill and I'm at the top. I'm there. The wind is blowing. Wind's blowing like crazy. It's cold. I had been sweating from the hike, but the cold wind is hitting me, you know, and it's chilling me. And all of a sudden, the wind just stopped. Dead silence. No birds, no sound. All I could do is hear my breathing and no one else is around. I'm searching for a place to sit so I could get some water and have a, a snack. And I found this little teeny patch where the snow wasn't on this rock. And I went over and I sat down, took off my backpack. And as soon as I looked to the left to look to the rise and all of a sudden out of nowhere, I broke down and just started bawling. And I'm thinking, the heck is wrong with me 
I just came up this beautiful hike, all this snow all over the mountain, the lake is frozen and I'm bawling and I'm scanning the whole horizon. And I got to where out of the right side of my peripheral vision, it's like something was standing right by me, just, just right over my right shoulder. And just for a nanosecond, I felt a hand hit my shoulder and I heard this voice say, everything is going to be okay. And it startled me and I turned and looked and nothing's there. Nothing. I sat on that rock for probably, I don't know, five, 10 minutes, just bawling, just tears yeah. pouring down my face. And I'm, I still don't know what's going on with me. And I'm thinking, did I just experience this or am I freaking really losing my mind? And I start hearing some voices and I look over it and I see this couple come up, coming up over the hill. And as soon as they broke up on top of the hill, the wind started back up again. That's yeah. Wow. And I'm going, my gosh. So I end up going back down the mountain. As soon as I get out of the Canyon, I get on the phone and I call my friend Lori. She lives in Ogden. I says, you will not believe what just happened to me. I think I'm losing it. And she said, sweetie you just had a spiritual visit yep take it accept it you're not going crazy and that was almost like the beginning of my wife starting her journey right it's so flipping crazy so when you told me that that voice hit in your head that's the first thing that i thought of was that experience i had at lake blanche because no other way it could have happened. The wind just doesn't stop like that and just go dead silent. It doesn't. Oh, it's it like it's beautiful in my opinion because it it exists. It's not going crazy. I've I've been there. Just I mean, just to add to the story I was just talking about, it's just you know like everything that that voice said to me came true. And I'll leave it at that. Every, every single thing that that voice told me, it came true. So I, I know exactly it. how that goes. <laughs> you know, cause I'm, I'm sitting there like, okay, I'm tripping off the pills. <laughs> <laughs> I'm having a little bit of a pill relapse here, you know? Yeah, exactly. But no, man, it's, it's cool. And you know, I had this weird thought. Cause I try to explain to, you know, some of my friends and, and stuff, what was going on or that prominent voice you hear and stuff sometimes, especially in dire need situations, uh, a lot of them can't relate and stuff. And I've always been wondering if there was somebody out there, cause I don't really mention it to a lot of people open up. Um, so just hearing you say that story, uh, it really meant something to me, man. Like, definitely feeling the emotion so it's yeah that, that was just yeah it's amazing so yeah yeah we we all well i think we all get it i think it's just at the right time when our mind is more open that we actually see it right and we actually feel exactly. it the way we're supposed to feel it exactly um, oh go ahead did you have something else austin oh no i was just gonna say exactly man it's uh i think that's what brings me a lot of comfort in this world. And uh, just knowing something that, that that is greater than us and there is something guiding us, whether people like to think of it as Jesus, people like to think of it as another higher power, whatever brings you to the highest form of spirituality, for me, it is God. Um, but just having faith in something bigger than you is a great thing. And you can listen to that guidance if you focus in um, and have awareness towards that and and believe in that so yeah amen i i would say ditto on that one definitely well man it's hard to believe we've gone over an hour i mean things have flowed so flipping well i was just checking out the time i'm like oh my gosh man we've we've gone i can't believe it's 249 right i know <laughs> <laughs> Which, which is good. It, it, no problem at all. And, I, and I'm so grateful that we had this time and was able to not have a time frame because everything that needed to be said had to be said, right? That's why it's gone so smooth. I, I, you know, the message had to come out. And even if it took over two hours, then the message took that long to get out. 
you know, you talked a little bit about what you wanted the audience, what are, you wanted our listeners to hear. What's your main message for the audience? So my main message is just don't have limited beliefs. Um, you, you know, have faith in your process if you've laid a process out for yourself. If not, that's okay. You can still make a plan and obtain your goals. If you're dealing with mental illness or drug addiction, um, you can very well find your way. I can promise you that. Um, like I've mentioned in this video, you know, I've had suicide attempts. Um, I went to jail twice and uh, went to the psychiatric union. And you know what? Um, to give you all a good idea, I'm in my new um, Natty Addy office. So awesome. I'm in my new <laughs> office. Yeah, so I'm in my uh, new office. Um, and just, and that goes to show you, you know, like anything's possible. So I, you know, um, so don't limit to yourself. And most importantly, guys, take time, take time to uh, let yourself feel down. I know that sounds contradicting and stuff, but take time, um, let yourself fall down, uh, find rest, rest a lot. If you're dealing with mental illness, rest, find your rest and find peace and rest. Don't beat yourself up about it. I, I was in rest for, you know, like I said, six to eight months and couldn't figure it out for two to three years. Give yourself time and don't be too hard on yourself and do the best you can each day. And most importantly, guys, if you have to be on medication, I am on uh, lithium and two other medications that I take every single day. Um, uh, a lot, there's a lot of stigma out there that, oh, they're just trying to control you and stuff. No, they're not. Um, you got to find the, you know, right medication for you, of course. And I'm not a, a psychiatrist or physician, but I do recommend people seeing one. I have a very psychiatrist. Um, I had to go through four or five of them. And that's the brutal truth. I've had to go uh, through 20 to 20 to 30 different medications before I found the right combination. And that gives yourself, you know, you gotta give yourself patience for that. But I medicated every single day and I enjoy it because I go live, live my life. So I don't limit your life by so not getting the help you need. I love it. That's, that's great advice. Definitely, definitely great advice. And, you know, some of our listeners may have heard me, you know, I, I talk down about prescription drugs a lot. However, I also know there are some that definitely make a difference, right? That they, they help people. And it's not that I, I'm dissing on all of them because mm -hmm. I do know there is a place because my wife's on some too, and she has to have them to keep her, keep herself, you know, where she needs to be. And it's what I'm talking about is, you know, is, is the opioid type ones where people are kind of taking, oh. you know, getting the abuse and things like that. And, you know, so again, I, I just want our listeners to know, and, and I've said this many, many times, it's, I'm not against all of them because there are definitely some that need, people need, they need to, so they can keep their focus, right? So they can keep their head on the, the right way so they can accomplish what they want to accomplish. And, and, I and now I back, I back that up, Al, because there are those uh, prescriptions they do give out uh, terrible for you. Um, you know, I'm not going to list anything, uh, but Al's completely right on that. Like you, you got it. That's why it took me 30 to 40 times. Cause there are those pills that sedate you. My pills don't sedate me They're yeah. They don't have amphetamines and you know, stuff like that. But, but, yeah, uh, yeah. look, look at this. So Al, we just came up with, a, a an all natural Adderall for people with ADHD. Wow. Wow. Yeah. So it has three ingredients, L-theanine, caffeine, and methylene blue, all natural ingredients from our earth. And, um, and after all of what I said, I do have hopes in the future that we can find all natural medicine for bipolar and stuff like that. I think that's like one of my ultimate goals for, you know, when I grow up. So I stand with you on that, Al, by the way. So. Well, thank you. And how can people find that? Do you have a link or anything that people can go to to find that? Yeah. So I have this QR code, okay. but I can, I mean, I can, um, I can mail some to you or drop some off to you. Um, but if you want to go to our website, it's just nattyaddy.com. And okay. there's no crash. 
there's no uh, there's no side effects. I've been taking it for three months now, and I've you know I I don't get lackadaisical. So okay, and pull that up again to make sure I get the spelling right. So Natty. So it's N A T T Y A D D Y, and you said dot com, nattyaddy.com? Yes, sir. So okay. yeah, like I, but yeah, like I said, we're we're trying to find alternatives, natural alternatives, because I do, uh, I want to make that prominent. I do stand with you on that, Al. So, and that's natural ingredients for bipolar. You said correct. Um, ADHD, and okay. so we got. My psychiatrist is working on it right now. He thinks the, that this formula can be a natural mood stabilizer. So instead of giving them ph pharmaceutical uh, mood stabilizers, um, um, he can give them this formula. So, okay. so they're in, it's in the works right now. So, And the reason why I was asking, because I want to make sure that when your show comes out, that, that website's on there, right? I want to make yeah. sure that so people that are listening to this – that uh, they have a place to, to check that out. So if they're interested in it, yeah, that's why I wanted to make sure we got that on there. Cool, and yeah, like on our website, um, you know, it, it lists all the ingredients, man. It's, uh, there's no BS there and um, you can see everything we're doing with it. You can follow our Instagram page and um, follow what we do. And this is the company me and my friends have created for ourselves. and. Our, me our mission, just like my mission is with my story, is to help people and get them off uh, a lot of the bad pharmaceutical drugs that they have. So I love it. I love it. That's, uh, yeah, after, after, after we get off air, we'll, we'll chat a little bit. But, yeah, I, I love that. I love that whole thing about it. Um, what's your Instagram page? So I can make sure I get it on there, too. Okay, let me look this up real quick. So it is called Natty Addies. So N-A-T-T-Y-A-D-D-Y-S. Okay. And that's your Instagram, Natty Addies. Okay. Yep. Awesome. Well, for those listeners who didn't quite get that, just uh, check out the caption. It'll be on the caption. We'll make sure that we get, uh, get that on there. Is there anything else you'd like to share before we sign off here, buddy? Yep. Uh, you're the man. And thank you for having me on your show, Al. It, it truly is a blessing to meet you and do this, man. I've, I've always wanted to take it to a, a little bit of a new level and this has helped me. So I appreciate you, man. Thank you so much, man. And, and I appreciate you. Thank you so much for your time. Listeners, man, I just want to say thank you to all those that support us, all our amazing sponsors that have supported us, man, without you guys none of this would be possible. We, we just have to say thank you. And even though we're not in a new studio yet, as I do, I have to say thank you to Resilience Talk Network because they're the ones that opened up their, their heart and their kindness to their studio and allow us to come in and, and do this amazing show and bring in so many amazing individuals and guests. Man, we just love and appreciate you all. Yeah, it's, uh, yeah just keep listening, guys. If you... Uh, listen to this show and you know someone that uh, may get something out of it please send it to them ask ask people to like and subscribe to our youtube we're on all the major platforms help us build this thing we just want to continue to touch lives make a difference you know uh, like austin said during the show sometimes it takes us a little while to find the things that we need right my wife went through eight different rehabs it took her a little bit of time before she finally found what she needed and it took me some time to finally find out what I needed. You know, it's just like going to a gym. You just don't go get a gym membership and go for a month and expect to get results. It takes time, you know, and start finding things that work for you because there is something that's out there. Can end with this as we do at the end of every show, guys. Remember, addiction is giving up everything for one thing and recovery is giving up one thing for everything. We're out. <laughs>